Hi folks, it's Graham here and today I want to take you through what is Microsoft Teams public preview. Now, why might you want this? Well, you might want to see what's coming soon, hence the logo. Never get this right. So what we want to do is actually create a Microsoft Teams policy to allow certain users to see preview features. Then this allows you to test out these features and then get you into maybe creating some new user guides, for example, so that your users are comfortable with these new features when Microsoft roll them out. So they go through uh, a number of features. So TAP, Technology Adoption Program, <laughs> Internal Dog Food is another program features go through. And then the next one is Public Preview and then GA, General Availability. So Microsoft have made it possible now that users can be put into a Microsoft Teams Public Preview. So let's check it out. So here we are on the Microsoft Teams release notes. And what was recently released was a web client release. And this is what prompted me to talk about public preview. We had 4.10.10, which I did a video on, and I'll link to it up there in the corner so you can see what the new features were and listed there. But let's look at the web client release. And you might have heard me previously talk about things on server side updates and this is one of those features so this web client update will give you this new uh, layout on the center of room console it will give you that dynamic gallery which i'll do a, a video and blog on a new layout picker actually that might have been talked about um might be delayed there's a message sensor id on that one that came up recently spinning uh spinning Spotlighting and pinning people. Again, the video I did yesterday on that one, I talk about uh, these new features in the roadmap watch. So all these are upcoming. Now here we have this nice little purple box that says, you know, web client updates are available to all Teams rooms with application version 4.10 and 4.9. Now this is Windows because of the version numbers. Admins will be able to enroll Teams rooms public preview program to get a sneak peek of these web client features. So why don't we enroll some of our users and our room accounts into the public preview? So quite handily, a colleague friend, Martin Bohm, who works at Microsoft, he created a blog post talking about what is public preview. And I'll link to this in below so you can have a read of it as well. So again, if one person is, is there, is it for everyone in the tenant? No, it's per user basis. We need to put a policy in place. And how do we do it? So that we need to create an update policy. You've got to be uh, wary of what your uh, office channel is as well, just so you don't have any conflicting um, policies there. And again, obviously, you can also disable it as well. But what features are in public preview? So there's a couple of links here, which I'll put in the description below as well. So you can see on the tech community, we have the public preview. And again, Microsoft will post, here's this new feature, go and test it out, have a feel. So it gives you that ability to try things out before it reaches your main users. And then we also have release notes for the uh, Microsoft Teams client, etc. So, uh, and the Teams admin features. So we can see here what was released back in uh, November 11th. So we've got a great new feature of fluid components and Teams chat, etc. Custom backgrounds on, on mobile devices. Um, but then we also have what's new in the uh, Microsoft Teams desktop and web client, what's rolling out in a standard build, so rather than preview. Now this is here for our desktop and web experiences, our iOS, Android, and then in Microsoft Teams devices, we jump to this other page, and then this will tell us what is new on Teams rooms on Windows, which we've seen before, but also we will then see things like the Microsoft Teams phone, what was in the latest version in November, so that's, I believe, it's update three. And then we have Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android. That is a July build. And then we can drop the arrow down and go to Teams Displays, and then also go to Teams Panel. So there's displays outside the room. Line of Business Apps, which I'll put a link in on, on what you can do with Line of Business Apps. They're quite cool as well. So that is the process of what we want to look at. Now let's jump to our Microsoft Teams Admin Center. So here we have my brand new Microsoft demo tenant, Contoso Electronics. And what I wanna do now is go and look at my um, Teams update policies. So I click on there and I can see I have one default and it's following the 
Office preview features. So that's the default. Now, what you don't want to do is obviously change this for everyone. You want to make this available just for a certain number of users that they are able to look at these policies uh, for public preview. So what we want to do is click on add, and then we want to give this a name. So let's call it Teams Public Preview. And you can give it a description, allow users to test features, for example. And then we want to change this uh, preview features to enabled. So uh, we click on enabled and then just further down, we hit apply. So then we have that policy that is now in place. That's great. It's there. Now, what do we need to do? What we need to do is then set this up to apply this to users. So we go to our manage users over on the left side. And let's pick, um, let's pick Alex. And Alex, we want to go into his policies. So we go here to policies. And then we want to go to assigned policies and we click on edit. And then we look at his uh, update policy. And we want to change that to our team's public preview. And again, right down the bottom, we have an apply. So we select that. So that is Alex. So now he's in public preview. So again, this will take a little while to replicate. But while I'm here, I also want to maybe create a room. So let's pick, uh, I know one of my rooms is Adams. So again, I go into the user, into the policy and assigned policy. And then we want to go to our update policy of public preview. Now, the reason you want to is because some features, i.e. calling, you need two people. So you want them both to be on, on the same level. So that is one thing you want to think about. Maybe not just one person, but two people at least to be in a preview um, state, should we say. You can also do this to multiple users. So if you want to, let's say, do a batch of users, you can obviously click the side piece on many people, click on then edit settings and then set the policy. So that's another way you could do it as well if you want to do multiple users in one hit. The other way you could do it is through PowerShell. So allow public preview. Now, obviously you can um, run PowerShell on your Windows desktop, but if you've got, say, your access to your Microsoft Azure, there is a new feature now at the top corner here, top rail, you can run PowerShell, for example. That is, another way to run PowerShell on your tenant. So once we've done the PowerShell commands or through the uh, Teams Admin Center, the users need to enable public preview. Now let's take this for example. I'll go to my user here, it's logged in. And I go to the three dots and I go to about. And you see I've got legacy, privacy and cookies and third party notice. Remember, I'm not in public preview. Now your users must do this. Uh, you can't force it down to them. So let's now bring up a new user, uh, Alex, who's signed in, and he is here. And what we do is, again, we go on, on the same thing. We go on the three dots, about, and you see we have public preview. That's because the policy is assigned to me now. So I click on there, public preview. Obviously, we get this little warning coming up now. The previews are uh, provided as is. Obviously, there could be some, uh, you know, challenging features, should we say, but obviously you need to be aware of the risk that you know, not everything is plain sailing. So hence why you use more experienced users and obviously uh, demo devices. So we want to now go and select that and switch to public preview. We tap that button and the client now reloads. We will want to do the same for Adam's conference room, for example. So we'll, again, I'm using a private browser so nothing conflicts. So again, we accept all the, uh, new features. So we're now in preview. Now what you'll notice in the top corner is above my name, I have a little P symbol. So just right there, P for preview. So this is now in public preview. So the user will be able to see all these new features that are coming. But what I want to do now is obviously sign out. And sign out of Alex. And there we are, we are done. We're now signed out of 
that account. So now let's sign in as the the room account that I set up. So again, we have both users in public preview. And we sign in as that user. And again, we want to be able to check that they are in public preview. Make sure that's ticked. And again, we've got the P symbol right above us. That's good. And we are in developer and public preview. So we'll see both those options there. So one thing we want to do is actually maybe do a little test call and see if we can see new features. Now, uh, I've created a, an account, a test meeting here. Let's join that now. Now, one of the features in public preview is the U bar. So if we join this for now, let's just save the camera. We'll see where our bar is. So we see the bar down the bottom. Just to show you that, let's just move that up there. So we see the universal bar that is still down the bottom. So as we mentioned earlier, it may take a little while for public preview to be applied. So then that would move to the top at the rail at the top just above our search bar. So everything is up there, just like it is um, in a public preview. So again, you can identify and tell users where things are moving. So that is it for our public preview. That is us enabling our users to be able to test out new features. So give it a couple of hours. Again, sometimes like four hours is uh, maybe even up to 24 hours could be the time it replicates and updates the users. Obviously, we've got the P symbol, which is good. It's a good start. Our clients are in the preview. We just want to now wait for those features to be uh, applied to our users. So go and do it in the morning, try it in the afternoon, for example. But that is us in public preview. And again, have a couple of users, have a group of users or super users. Uh, get them some great swag and merch to uh, show that they're Microsoft Teams super users. And then they become the experts or knowledge workers um, that know what's coming in Teams and are able to maybe help others. We're on Teams calls all day, so as long as you've got some uh, users that might be a bit um, more experienced and know what's coming and what's changing, because it is a big change. Moving icons around can be a big change for users because they're used to where things are. So by enabling public preview, two things. One, you get that uh, first-hand experience seeing what's happening. And secondly, give feedback to Microsoft. So on that tech community, sign in, create an account, give feedback. But also we have the new feedback portal as well. I'll put that in the link below that you can actually give feedback. Hey, I want this feature Microsoft. Um, so again, a great new feature and I'll link to that above as well. So you can easily click on that. So that is Microsoft Teams public preview available now and sign up your users, test it out. Any comments, let me know below. Thanks very much for watching.